Where is everybody? Right here. <laughs> we might be small, but we're mighty, aren't we? Huh? Yeah, we are. Anybody see a cricket in here tonight? Yeah. Isn't it baby in? It's in the war. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm getting us all cranked up ready. <laughs> Boys and girls, you know what? I had something planned today, but I think I'm going to hold off on that. We're going to switch gears here. And we're going to do something else, okay? How about that? I'm going to read you one of my favorite stories. My, one of my very favorite ones, and my poor Bible is about to fall apart. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this was about a little man. Does anybody know what his name was? A little Zacchaeus. 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 Okay, Zacchaeus was a man who took tax money from people. Tax money was what they had to pay to their king. Do we pay taxes today? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yes. But Zacchaeus took more money than he was supposed to. Now, when you take something that's not yours, what is that called? Stealing. Stealing. He took more money than he was supposed to, and he kept it to make himself rich. Oh, that's not right. And nobody liked him. Nobody. Does he look like a nice guy? No. No, he doesn't, does it? Just greetings. One day, Jesus was passing by his town. <clears throat> everyone, everyone in town heard that Jesus was coming, and everyone went to see him. Even Zacchaeus went to see Jesus. But Zacchaeus had a problem. He was short. He was too short. Everyone was in his way, and he could not see. Have y'all ever been to a parade, and there were people standing in front of you? Sorry. I know it's falling apart, isn't it? Okay. Have you ever been to a parade and uh, there are people standing in front of you and you're looking this way, you're looking this way, you can't see over their head, you can't see anything? That was Zacchaeus because he was too short. And he had a problem being was short, he couldn't see anything. So then Zacchaeus had an idea. He said, you know, there's a big sycamore tree down the road. I'm going to run down there and I'm going to climb that tree. And I'll be able to see Jesus. So he found the perfect place to watch and see Jesus coming. He could look down the road and see everybody coming his way. And there were a lot of people. <clears throat> okay, little Bobby, just hang on. When Jesus got to the tree, he stopped. Just stopped. And he looked up at Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, come down right now. I need to stay at your house. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that Jesus knew Zacchaeus was going to be up there in that tree? Yes. I do too. I do too. Zacchaeus, hurry down the tree. Jesus wants to stay with me, he thought. So he took Jesus to his house and he told Jesus, Jesus, I want to do what is right. I'll give back all the money I took to make me rich. Jesus was pleased. Zacchaeus had chosen to do the right thing. Now let me ask you this. Did the people in the town like Zacchaeus? No. no. How do you think, what do you think they felt when, when Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I want to go to your house. What do you think those people were thinking? That, like, why would you want to go to his house? Why would you want to go? He's a sinner. He's a sinner. He's a bad guy. He steals money. Why would you want to go to his house? But Jesus chose Zacchaeus' house to go to. And he said, get down from there, Zacchaeus. I'm going to your house today. Now, something happened while Zacchaeus was with Jesus, didn't it? Because he was filled with, his heart was dirty and filthy and mean and hateful. And all of a sudden, he wants to do the right thing. Jesus changed his heart. When he went to Zacchaeus' house, Jesus changed his heart, and he became kind and loving and peaceful and generous, and he wanted to do what? What did Zacchaeus want to do after Jesus changed his heart? He wants to be nice. To be nice, and what else? There's to one. Be kind. And to be kind, and what else? There's one thing I'm looking for. Give the money back. He changed Zacchaeus' heart, and he wanted to give the money back that he had taken. Now, boys and girls, the same thing happens today. Jesus can take a mean old, hateful, stingy, ugly heart, and he can make something beautiful out of it. He does the same thing today with people all around us. And I don't know about you, but I think we serve a mighty, mighty God that he's able to change our hearts into some loving, kind person, don't you? Let's pray. <clears throat>
Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for these kids that are here that have come to learn more about you. And Father, I especially thank you for their parents who got up early and got these kids ready to come to church because they feel it's important that they know who you are. Lord, I thank you for Zacchaeus. I thank you for the miracle that you did in his life and you took that old mean, hateful heart and you changed it into something beautiful. And Father, we know that you can do the same thing today, Lord. We love you so, so much. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Sorry, had one birthday. Snuck up on me. I can't believe our little Wendy's going to be 16 years old. Wow. Awesome. I remember them. She first, I first saw her, and that was for Libby, so let's just hope she decides to have a birthday today, possibly. Okay, turn to page three. I know we say this a lot, but when Mike's here, I just like the way he plays it. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Your check's in the mail. Your check is in the mail. Page three. Please turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 13. 
verses 11 through 14. I'm not going to lie, this sermon is it's going to have a fair amount of scripture through it. So I'll have all the slides up here so you shouldn't have to worry about that. So I've got to set something here. The plan is blowing my page. But I titled it, Stop Burning Daylight. And I think in this passage we get that from Paul pretty handily when he says, the night is far gone. The day is here. We need to get up and get moving is what we see in this text. And just as the, you know, in the movie, The Cowboys, one of the greatest ever. Amen. There's a scene where John Wayne, who, you know, Will Anderson is his character's name in it. He is there at the wagon and he's waking the boys up and it's still pitch black. They show the clock, they pay him by and it's like 3.30 in the morning. And he's waking them up and he tells them to get up, we ain't moving, you know, we're burning daylight. Well, one of the boys crawls out of bed, cleans his covers off, and looks up. And by burning daylight, I only see stars. But they still need to get up and get moving because the work was to be done. They needed to get up and get moving, even though all they could see was stars, because the sun was coming. And we need to get up and get moving, even if all we see are stars, because the sun is coming. Amen. We need to be focused. We need to be awake. We need to be alert. We need to be committed. We need to be serving. Because Christ is coming again. And every day, it's closer to Him coming than it was the day before. Every second, it's closer to Him coming than it was the second before. It's just like your life. Every day you live, you're that much older. Every day, every second, every minute. And guess what? If we march along in our life, we're marching, and the closer we the older we get, the closer we get to that time. That time that we go to be with the Lord. We go to our eternal home. Perfectly, everybody in here, when they go, they go to their Lord. But until that time, we're here. Until that time, we've got to wake up. We've got to get up. We've got to get dressed, and we've got to get moving. Because that's life in general. And it's what God desires of us. We have no excuse. We, we, we need to begin to walk in his way. We, it's so important to be aware of the time. We need to be aware. We need to not lose focus. We need to not become slack. And we need to quit forgetting how fleeting time can be. It's like this story of this man who went for a checkup at his doctor and he went back to get his results. Well, the doctor said, I have bad news and I have worse news. And I was like, what? The, what? And the doctor, he's like, which one do you want first? And I was like, I guess give me the bad news. Well, the doctor says, the bad news is you only have 24 hours to live. The guy jumps up, he's flabbergasted, he's distraught, he's pacing around the room. He's like, what? There's 24 hours to live? I can't get everything in order. I can't believe it. But what could be worse than this? The doctor says, I was supposed to tell you yesterday, but I forgot. <laughs> that's how life is that's how the time is that's how everything is we don't have a clue when that 24 hours is going to be up on us Amen. we don't have a clue what's going to happen between now and then I pray every day as one of my brothers brother Bobby he told me he said God's probably got a sense of humor I've been praying every day for you know to, for him to come, for him to call me home that way he said that what's going to happen is I'm going to die and like right after I die then that's what's going to happen <laughs> we don't really know I mean, that's a joke and all that but the thing is we don't know so there's no room or excuse for daydreaming or negligence on our part eternity is at stake every minute counts and if you're saved amen, awesome, great but there's still work to do amen. there's still work to do and Paul lays it out for us right here. In Romans 13, 11 through 14. And it says, and the word of God reads, Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, 
but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The time is known, so we must wake up. The return of Christ is nearer than before. The night is gone. The day is at hand. It is here. We need to walk properly, not as at the night, but be sober and aware. Anytime you try to walk at night without a light, it's pretty difficult to walk, isn't it? Even in a place you know. I can't tell you how many times I have rammed my thigh on the corner of our bed. And it's a wood and it hurts. Thankfully, it's my thigh, not my toe. But it's, it's my house. I know the path. I know where I'm going. I know what's going on. And I'm so reminded. I'm not drunk. I'm not none of that. And I still run into it because there's no light. Now think about it if your mind's distorted and you're trying to walk that path even when you know it. You're going to trip. You're going to fall because it's dark and your mind is not right. You're going to struggle. How much different is that for us who are walking in the world of this dark, 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 dark world if we're not walking in the light of Christ every day? That's what he's saying. We need to be walking in that light. We need to be focused on him. We need to clothe ourselves in Christ. We need to follow him, and we must follow him, and we can follow him because we have him. If you're in Christ, if you are saved, if you are washed by the blood of the Lamb, if you are cleansed from your sins, and you have Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit indwelling you, you can walk in that light, no matter how dark the world is around you. You can do it because of him. Not you, not me, not anybody in this room coming alongside you. Yes, we can all help, but we walk in that path. We walk in that light because of Jesus Christ and him in us. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. And that's the power we have. But first, Paul gives us this three-step principle of how we can stay focused on that. And the first is to wake up. We just got to wake up. We know the times we're living in. You can't miss it. You see it all around you. You just look anywhere. You see it. I personally have a subscription to about four different newspapers that I read on a regular basis. Some of them are really this way. Some of them are really this way. Some are right in the middle. And I read the Wall Street Journal, I read the New York Times, and I read the Wichita paper, I read the paper here, I read some stuff in Texas Monthly, and I read a whole bunch of other news articles. I'm constantly in it. And the reason why is because I want to know what's going on. So I know what everybody's experiencing out there. I want to know. That way I know how to write my morning devotionals I've put out in a way that pulls from Scripture that approaches that stuff that gives you hope, gives you something to go on that will help wake you up. Because this world is evil, and it's rough. People are against the good, and they're for the bad. But to be awake means we're alert. It means we're focused. It means we have our minds right. It means we're looking at things. We're studying things. We're moving forward. We're focused. We're not letting the side things drag us down. We're not letting it pull us back. We're not looking back behind us at things that we've left behind. We're alert. We're focused. And as it says in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. If we're not alert, he's going to devour us. If we're not focused, he's going to drag us down. If we're not committed to Christ and walking in Christ and following Christ and committed to Christ, he will drag you down like a zebra that got away from the pack and is all alone. And a lion gets that. That's what will happen. So we've got to be awake. We've got to be alert. You can't be out there, you know, like in horror movies. There's always that one person that's not paying attention. They're at the back of the people, and then they get taken by the killer. Every time. Every horror movie. You can watch the same exact plot, same exact theme. But the point of it is, and that's how we are. The reason why it's like that is because that's how we are. We drift. We don't stay focused. We don't stay alert. And we get ourselves segregated from the group. And Satan comes up and goes, ah. We've got to stay focused. We've got to stop sitting back and just complaining, but actively seek change. It's easy. Like I said, I read those papers. It's easy for me to read through them and complain about what's going on in the world, the depravity. It's easy to complain. It's hard to get up and do a change. It's hard to step out and move against this stuff. It's hard to move against abuse, human trafficking, 
and all of these things that are going on, then guess what? If the Christians don't do it, who's going to? We got to step up. We got to move. We got to stop throwing fits and complaining in our chairs, but get up and go. Amen. And sometimes in our failure to stay awake and stay alert, we sugarcoat sin. We'll say things like, they made a mistake. They've had an affair. They're living together. They're not all that bad. Instead, what we should be saying, this person has committed sexual immorality. They defiled the marriage bed. They have sin and need Jesus. Sin. We're afraid to say that word. We're afraid to call stuff what it is sometimes. And I think it's because we're not fully awake. Sometimes we're not fully awake, and when you're not fully awake, you don't really talk very coherently, do you? So sometimes we're still kind of bogged in that darkness. But to be awake means we're out of that darkness. We're alert. We're paying attention, and we see what things are. We call it what it is. And we can do that. We have God's Word that tells us all throughout how to live, how to walk, how to move. As I've seen many different times, it's basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what you can just write it off at. That's what it is. Read it, learn it, love it, live it. It is the word of God that will fill us and give us the wisdom to approach people, to approach situations, to help people, to help them understand, to, to try to draw them out of the sin that they're in, in so we can draw them into the light. And some of this may involve us having to go back to when we first believed. When you first got saved, when you had that first fire inside of you for Christ. Well, just like the churches in Revelation, sometimes we forget our first love. Sometimes we walk away from that and, and, and we fail because we don't feel like because we've had this, this kind of hyped up view of it. Like these Hallmark movies make of marriage and love, which is nonsense because marriage and love is hard work. The Christian life is hard work. The Christian walk is hard work. But we wake up every morning and go to work at a job that's hard. Some people in here probably have a job you don't really like, but you know you need to work, so you get up and go. Some of you have jobs that wear you out because it's that hard. But you get up and go. The Christian walk is the same thing. We've got to go back to that first love. We've got to go back to that first desire. We have to go back to that and push it forth and go. And be who we are. Because that time is close. We need to work as tirelessly for the Lord as we work for our families. But to do that, we need to cast off the darkness. Yeah. Cast that off. Get that away. The night is this present evil time that we're in. The night is gone. The day is Christ's return. Cast off the darkness. Get up. Because when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you lay in bed and you're fully awake. But guess what? You're not up yet, are you? You're awake. You're alert. But you're not officially up until you swing your feet and they hit the floor and you stand up. That's when you're up. I make that distinction with my children all the time. So I'm like, get up. I'm like, we're up. I'm like, no, you're not. You're still laying in bed. You got to get out. Same with us. We got to cast those bed clothes off. We got to get those sheets off of us and get up and get moving and go into the day. Cast the darkness off. Cast it aside. Get it going. And too many Christians are one that want to just lay there in bed too long and hit the snooze. Hit the snooze. Hit the snooze. Hit the snooze. Because the they're staying in the darkness. Yes, they're awake. Yes, they know Christ, but they keep hanging in the darkness. They keep hanging over here. And some of that is because they've never been trained and told it's the darkness. They don't know how dark and evil it is. So we've got to cast that off and go forward and be the light of Christ. As he tells us in Matthew 5, 16, he says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. We've got to be a light. We've got to be a bright light. We've got to be those lights that you see advertised, you know, as seen on TV, that like if this room was dark, you push it, it lights it up. I don't think they really work that good, but when we're in Christ, we can be that light in this dark world. Anybody in here ever been really, like, just pure pitch black? Like, pure pitch black, like in the Carlsbad Caverns or somewhere where there's absolutely zero light, not even a moon, nothing. And then you flick on a cigarette light, if that's all you got. It's amazing how much that will light up in pitch black. <clears throat> 
somebody smoking a cigarette, that this cherry end of that will light up like you can't believe. You can see their full face in pitch black. When it's dark, it doesn't take much light to bring the to show what's going on. And we can be that light in this super dark world. We must shine so bright the darkness flees. We must shine so bright that the world all around us sees. And we must shine so bright that all of evil is afraid of us. So of us being afraid of evil, shine so bright that evil runs. We gotta stop standing in the darkness and saying we're of the light. D.L. Moody said about it, there is nothing the world needs more than holy Christians. The cause of Christ is paralyzed because of sin in believers. Because we sometimes hang up our sin. We don't confess our sins out and get it out and leave it behind. See that, that section in 1 John 5, 9, talking about, or not 5, 9, but 1 John 1, 9, talking about that, says, you know, you know confess your sin. And he is righteous to forgive. James talks about confessing to one another. Sometimes we'll hold stuff in because we're embarrassed. And then it makes us bitter and angry. And it paralyzes Christ's work. But if we cast that darkness off, we talk to one another, we present it to one another, we deliver it to one another, we got other people that are cheering for us, fighting for us, standing for us, saying, yes, Christ has you. Cast it off. Cast it off. Quit holding on to it. Cast it off. And get to moving because Christ is working for us. Christ is for us. And sometimes our actions, when we are holding on to that, will betray our profession of faith. It'll betray who we are. So we can cast it off. And we can act like our Lord. We can act like Christ because we are Christians. We are little Christ. We are His. We can act like Him. We can be like Him. You can do it because of Him in you. That's how we do it. That's how we cast it off. He cast it off for us. But we've got to give it to Him. People are watching. People are looking. People see us. People... Keep a closer eye on you than you think. And they know how you act in the dark and in the light. But I want to tell you something right now. Sometimes we think we can hide our sins from God. He sees it all. We can hide it from each other for a minute. But God sees it all. There's nothing we can hide from Him. So we need to cast it off and be focused. We need to cast it off and stop walking down these deadly paths. We need to cast it off and stop walking down these Sin, sinful, drunken, sexual, perverse paths that we see. There's too many things that catch our eye. There's too many people that run to the pill, that run to the bottle, that run to the pornography, that run to all of that stuff rather than run into Christ. A bad thing hits, they run to one of those rather than Christ. Something happens, they run to the darkness rather than the light because they're embarrassed. I want to tell you right now, in Christ, there is nothing to be embarrassed about. He died for that. He will forgive that. He has forgiven that. He will cleanse you because you are cleansed. You are his. Do not be embarrassed. Get it out. Follow him because he loves you. So do we. We don't need to hide. Because hiding just causes us to fall deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into that hole. Into that darkness. Paul tells us in Romans 12, 1 through 2, I'm not going to quote the whole thing, but he tells us to be a living sacrifice. To be a living sacrifice, to be that sacrifice. The sacrifice back in the day had to be pure and holy. So to be a living sacrifice, we need to transform, to be renewed in our minds, to be focused on Him and faithfully follow Him and do His will. And His will is to own, a, own no one nothing except for love. But love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor. That's what he tells us. That's what we do. And that's how we do. That's why I said there's no shame. You should not have any embarrassment. You should not be afraid of any of the sins you've committed in your life. Because we love each other. Because we are the body of Christ. If you're in Christ, you have to love each other. They say you got to like each other. You have to love each other. We're one together. And we can do it because of Christ. Because love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love does no wrong to anyone. It is the fulfilling of the law. And the way we do this, the way we do it is right here. Put on Christ. When we get up and get dressed in the morning, we dress appropriately for the day, right? You're not running around in a wool coat right now, are you? I hope not. And in the wintertime, you're not running around in a sleeveless shirt and shorts. 
the foot falls when it's 20 degrees. We dress appropriately for the day, right? That's what putting on Christ every morning. The prayer I've said before up here, the way I said in the morning, what I pray earlier when I pray, get up in the morning and say, Lord, use me to your glory today. It's all for you, Christ. It's all for you. That is putting on Christ. That is one way we do it. Because when we do that, we're putting him first in our thoughts right there in the morning. It's him. Another way we do it is we're bold about how we're identified. If you tell people, yes, I'm a Christian. I'm proud of being Christ. I'm proud to be his. I will boldly proclaim Jesus Christ. We don't hide it. We deliver it out. And second, we act like Christ. We are humble, we're loving, we're truthful, and we serve others. That's the deal I saw on Facebook. I think Nikki shared it, but I saw it. It said, we're waiting on Christ. And while we're waiting on Christ, we do what waiters do. We serve. We need to serve the world, and serve the body, and serve our local church, and serve the community, and be involved. That's putting on Christ. You'll be going places and people are like, why are you here? You know, because I love Jesus and I love you. And it makes people go, what? All we've ever done is bad. So what? I love Jesus and I love you. He died for you too. We do that. We boldly go where no man has gone before. Third, we get into his word and we pray to him. We study his word, we pray his word back to him, and we study his word, and we pray it back, and we study it, and we pray it. We never quit that cycle because that's what pours it into us. And that's how we pour it out to others. And that's how when we get in a situation where we see darkness, we go, blessed are those who are pure in heart. For they see the kingdom of God. We see that, and that's what we say. We focus on it. And fourth, we train our minds, which is what we saw in Romans 12. We train our minds. We are transformed, not conformed. Transform means you become something totally different. As I said before, that whiteboard that was our life that was completely covered in black, Christ didn't wipe it clean. He threw that away and put a whole new whiteboard up. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. We're transformed into him. And when we start letting the world conform us, that's black marks coming on that brand new whiteboard. We've got to train our minds. And you can do it. As I've said thousands of times, and I'll say it over and over again, we have the Holy Spirit. He is our guide. He is our comforter. He is our helper. He is our paraclete. He is our counselor. He is our advocate. And he is our guide into all truth. Mm -hmm. He will guide you correctly. But again, we sometimes cling to that sin, don't we? Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 tells us, or look at the cloud of witnesses that's surrounding us. Look at that. Chapter 11 of Hebrews. If you have not read it or you haven't read it in a while, go back and read it. It tells us of the faithful men and women. The faithful who looked to that far better country. Who looked to that promise of Christ. Who looked to that promise that God delivered to them. But they didn't receive it in this life. But by golly, they're there right now. You may not get it right now. But you will receive that reward. So look to that cloud of witnesses and look at what they suffered through. Some were sawn in half. Some were thrown to lions. Some were thrown into pits. Some were burned. Some were killed in other ways. But they stayed faithful. Look to them and lay off that sin that's holding you back. Lay it off. Y'all heard me talk about wearing that weighted vest when I go and jog in the mornings. That weighted vest is an encumbrance. It's heavy. It weighs me down. It pulls on me. It wears on me. And when I take it off, it's like a freedom. And I can run better. With that weighted vest, running a half mile, I'm stuck in air hard. But without that vest, I can run a full mile before I start pulling air. That's what this is about. Take that sin and lay it down at the foot of Jesus Christ because he has already forgiven you for it and cleansed you for it, but you've got to give it to him. Lay that encumbrance down, and that's how we can walk faithfully. We can do it through Christ. We can do it because of Christ. And we can do it because he gives us a path. He gives us a life. He gives us a way. He is the life. He tells us, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the path. I am the one. I am the light of the world. I will shine brightly for you. And his word, he's the word. He is his word here. We have it as a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. And that's how we stay focused. That's how we get up. That's how we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we make no provision for the flesh. We have him. 
we're fully engulfed in him. We have the armor of light on us. Darkness hates light. Darkness flees at light. You put the light switch on, it's gone. Put on that armor of light. Put on the armor of Christ. Put on Jesus Christ and the world will flee. Trust him. Rest in him. Give it to him. Because if not, we'll be like this crew on this ship who thought their captain was insane because he was looking at the stars to guide the ship across the seas. They said, we're on the seas. It's the water, the wind, and the waves. That's the navigation, not the stars. So they locked the captain up, and they sailed to a crash, and they all died. When our points of reference are limited to just ourselves, the immediate world, we will court disaster. So we've got to get our eyes on Christ. We've got to get our eyes on the end. We've got to have an eternal focus. We've got to have that point of reference and walk in his life. It will never crash. It will never falter. And people will see that. And people will wonder why we can walk through death, calamity, tragedy, heartache, grief, pain, suffering, and all of this stuff and have a smile on our face and go, it's okay. I know. I know where my Savior is. And I know where I will be. I know I'm in victory, fighting from a place of victory. I'm not fighting to win, I'm already in victory because I am in Christ. As the song says, victory in Jesus. Sometimes we sing it, we don't really mean it. We are in victory. We have Christ. There is nothing to hold us back. There is nothing that can hold you down. There is nothing that can hinder you because you have Christ. What hinders us is ourselves. We haven't put on Christ. We haven't woke up. We haven't got it. We haven't cast off. We still cling to some of that. And it's a hard walk. That growth to be more like Christ. It's hard work. Christ is working in us. His grace is what will sanctify you and grow you and glorify you. But it's not easy. It's hard. Sometimes we want to gripe about somebody. Sometimes we want to fuss about someone. Sometimes we want to do all that stuff. But we got to think, is this going to glorify our Savior? Mm -hmm. Christ died for us. He gave us the spirit. He gave us the power to walk. He gave us the ability to, as Paul writes in Philippians 4, 8, to think on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable. That's what we think on. Get our minds on that. Get our minds wrapped around that. Get our minds focused on what is good and holy and righteous and pure and lovely. And that's what will flow out of you. That's what will come out. And we can do that. We can be this unstoppable force for Christ. Because we have the all power Holy Spirit inside us. You, every one of you that's in Christ, you're one of the most powerful creatures on the face of the planet. Because you have the power of the one true God inside you. Live to that power. Try to wake up, cast up, put on, and walk a straight line to Christ so the world can see and we can do it. Not because of our power, but because of his power in us. Trust Christ and know that you can do this. Trust Christ and know that there's nothing Nothing that can take you down. So we just got to get up and stop burning daylight because the sun is coming. Mm -hmm. Let us focus on it. Amen. Amen. come to you today and we just thank you for this opportunity Lord we just thank you for a preacher that goes by the word and teaches us and leads us thank you for a congregation that supports our youth I thank you for anyone that steps in this building and just serves you allow us to have servant hearts and to go out into this world and bring people to you and to be a life that focuses on the word and not this world in Jesus name I pray Amen.
Amen. You all have a blessed week. I pray to see some of y'all here on Wednesday evening. Thank you.